The nitrile seems to be unique among the carboxylic acid derivatives we've looked at in that it seems to lack a leaving group. Unlike the other carboxylic acid derivatives which contain a carbonyl group, we don't really see an obvious candidate for a group that can leave within the nitrile. And this suggests that it's not amenable to nucleophilic acyl substitution. To an extent, that's true. However, under hydrolytic conditions, water and a large amount of acid and heat, we can convert the nitrile into a carboxylic acid derivative that does have the ability to undergo nucleophilic acyl substitution. When all is said and done, that intermediate is converted to a carboxylic acid at the end of this process, and ammonia is produced as well. And the way this works is first an addition process in which the elements of water add across the nitrile to form an intermediate primary amide. And notice that this addition process is the reverse of the dehydration reaction we saw that converted primary amides into nitriles. Here, the use of excess water and acid and heat converts the nitrile to a primary amide through addition rather than elimination. This first addition process involves the intermediate formation of first a protonated nitrile, which I won't draw out explicitly, and then after the addition of water, an intermediate that looks like this, which is isomeric with the primary amide, but has a CN double bond instead of a CO double bond. An isomerization process, in fact, a special kind of isomerization that we'll call tautomerization, we'll investigate in more detail in a future video series, occurs to give this amide intermediate. And nitrile hydrolysis can be stopped at the amide stage, but if we continue, another round of hydrolysis converts the amide into a carboxylic acid, and because it's primary, ammonia. So here, another equivalent of water gets involved, and we can see the elements of water incorporated. An additional hydrogen on the NH2 makes NH3, and the OH group becomes linked to the carbonyl carbon. And this is our typical nucleophilic acyl substitution process. This is just the hydrolysis of an amide that we've seen previously. On the whole, this conversion of a nitrile to a carboxylic acid is a functional group interchange process. The oxidation state of the carbonyl or nitrile carbon is plus three in the starting material and plus three in the product. However, it's convenient because we've converted a nitrile into a carboxylic acid. And if you think about where the nitrile carbon came from, it's very likely that this carbon came from nucleophilic cyanide, cyanide with a negative charge on this carbon. But in the carboxylic acid that we generate at the end of this process, this carbon becomes electrophilic. And so it's a way to invert the polarity of this carbon at the center. We can install the carbon using a nucleophilic process and then convert it into an electrophilic carbonyl carbon through hydrolysis. So at this point, it probably seems like we've come a long way from our reactivity map of the carboxylic acid derivatives. And on this slide, I just want to summarize everything that we've learned by drawing a map of reactions that convert the different carboxylic acid derivatives from one to the other. The first thing to note is that going down this ladder is a simple matter of treatment with a nucleophile. And so, for example, from the acyl chloride to the anhydride, simple treatment with a carboxylic acid is able to do this, or a carboxylate, and I'll just abbreviate that as RCO2M. Anhydride to an ester, well, that's as simple as an alcohol. And of course, an alkoxide, MOR, works as well. And to convert an ester to an amide, all we need to do is treat with the corresponding primary or secondary amine nucleophile. And of course, it's possible to jump down more than one level. So we could go from the anhydride to the amine, for instance, just by treating again with an amine nucleophile. And I won't elaborate all the possibilities here, but you can imagine all we need to do to move down on the ladder is just treat with the appropriate nucleophile. The carboxylic acid occupies an interesting position at the bottom of our reactivity ladder, and so that makes it relatively special in terms of the conditions needed to convert it to these various products. First, let's mention the anhydride. This is as simple as treating with the corresponding acyl chloride. We should really think of this as an acylation of the nucleophilic carboxylate oxygen rather than nucleophilic acyl substitution of the carboxylic acid. Here it's acting as a nucleophile when we treat with an acyl chloride. To go from the carboxylic acid to the acyl chloride, way up back to the top of the reactivity ladder essentially, we use thionyl chloride, SOCl2. To convert a carboxylic acid into an ester, 
that's Fischer esterification conditions. And so that will be something like an alcohol and catalytic acid. And usually we'll do something under these conditions to remove water to drive the reaction toward products. It's also worth mentioning here that we could use deprotonation of the carboxylic acid and an SN2 process on an alkyl halide or pseudo halide if this R group in the alkoxy group is primary and amenable to SN2. To go from the acid to an amide, we need to use peptide coupling conditions. We need to activate the acid, turn the OH into a better leaving group, and supply the nucleophile. And that's going to be a two-stage process. So for example, we might use something like DCC in the first step, followed by treatment with the primary or secondary amine. Here in the example, it's a secondary amine, which creates an amide with two R groups on the nitrogen. What about the reverse directions? Well, in red, below each line, I have a red arrow pointing to the left. So let's list the conditions to go in reverse below each line. So from an acid chloride to a carboxylic acid, well, that's water. Acid chlorides are sensitive to water and will react with it spontaneously to give carboxylic acids. To go from an anhydride back to a carboxylic acid, similarly, we can use water. And this sometimes benefits from an acid or base catalyst. Either one will work to get back to the carboxylic acid quickly. To go from an ester back to a carboxylic acid, we essentially do the reverse of Fischer esterification. So we still use a little bit of catalytic acid, but we use a large excess of water to drive this reaction toward the carboxylic acid reactant, and we may remove the alcohol byproduct at the same time. To go from an amide back to a carboxylic acid, we have to use forcing acidic hydrolysis conditions. So something like concentrated HCl and heat is needed to convert an amide into a carboxylic acid. One thing we haven't touched on too much yet is how to get to carboxylic acids from other types of functionality. We've seen that the hydrolysis of nitriles can give carboxylic acids. And the idea here is strongly acidic conditions, so concentrated acid and water, going through the amide, so converting the nitrile to an amide, and then through the concentrated acid and water nucleophilic acyl substitution then gives a carboxylic acid. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it starts from an organobromide, and this can be alkyl, alkenyl, or aryl, in fact, and involves treatment with magnesium followed by carbon dioxide, and then finally acidic workup. And I just wanted to list this here as a reference because it's going to be useful later for synthesis and things like this. We'll talk about the organometallic intermediate that's generated in this first step. It's called a Grignard reagent in a future video series. But this just completes the map and shows you entries into the carboxylic acid group in addition to transformations of that group.